Well, welcome back. Thank you very much indeed for joining us for this next session. Now, we have spoken many, many times over the course of the last four days now uh, about uh, the, the sales that uh, are possible through uh, the Alibaba ecosystem uh, and how to create and develop uh, uh, your business. Um, all roads, in a sense, lead to uh, and able to, to activate that as to having a Tmall store. Um, so it's uh, great to have a session that does what, it, in a sense, what it says on the tin. Uh, and this session is all about uh, how to open uh, your own Tmall store, uh, and uh, not just from a theoretical perspective, but from a practical uh, and uh, understanding uh, um, uh, people who have actually gone through the process. So I'm uh, very delighted to be able to hand over this session uh, to the experts uh, in that area. So Zarina Kanji, who is the team of business development and uh, marketing for uh, Alibaba, with uh, a very special guest uh, of Zarina's, which we're also very glad to welcome onto our uh, WPP uh, BAV Alibaba 1111 Global Shopping Festival broadcast. That's quite a mouthful. We'll have to find a way of shortening that. Um, Matt Banks uh, Compton, who is the co founder and managing director uh, of Vector Consumer. Um, and uh, the combination of both uh, Matt and Zarina, I think, will uh, shed an amazing amount of light and insight from a practical perspective of how you can go about creating your own team house store. Uh, and we can uh, benefit from uh, Matt's experience uh, of uh, of having uh, done that. Um, all will be revealed um, as I hand over to Zarina Kanju. Zarina, over to you. Well, we've got a great picture of you, but you seem to be frozen, Zarina. So um, uh, the, oh, the, the technical wizards do their wizardry thing. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, yes, we can see your screen. Great. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to present to you first for about 10 to 15 minutes, um, the theory of how to open a team or global store. Um, and then I'll have Matt join me afterwards for a chat about the practicality of doing it. So firstly, um, what's Tmall? Tmall is where Chinese consumers come to discover brands. It is Alibaba's B2C e-commerce platform. Um, every time I open the app, I see something new. It is all personalized towards me, um, to the tastes and the uh, brands and the habits that I like to shop and enjoy. So every time I open it, I can explore and discover new products, new brands from the categories I love. I can then share and recommend to my friends most of the SKUs will also have short video. So at any one time, there can be up to 2 billion listings on Tmall and our C2C platform Taobao. So having a short video as a brand enables you to capture the attention of a Chinese consumer very quickly. And then in a more longer format, we've got live streaming. Um, live streaming, I'll talk more about um, later on, but it's a phenomenon that's been taking over in China for the last five years that's really revolutionized the way that consumers engage and interact with brands and the way that brands sell to those consumers in return. So Timor Global specifically enables international brands to enter the China market. More than 80% of the brands on Timor Global are making their China debut, never done anything in China before. And as such, it makes it the largest B2C cross-border e-commerce platform in China. Currently, we have almost 30,000 international brands from 87 different countries and regions selling nearly 6,000 different categories. So whatever you have to sell, there's pretty much a market for it. One thing that is really key is understanding the difference between Tmall Global and Tmall. When it was first founded, Tmall.com, Tmall Domestic, was the platform. And what it did was help brands that were already established in China to sell on the marketplace platform to those consumers. So the brand needs to have everything set up in China. The differentiating point with Tmall Global, which was established in 2014 after the notably increased demand from consumers to want to access international brands that they could find when they traveled, but also from the demand for brands to be able to more easily access Chinese consumers from their home countries. 
So Tmall Global helps those brands to enter the Chinese market through cross-border trade. And what that means is that you effectively sell as you do in your home country. So your legal entity, your bank account, your payment details, um, your trademarks, all from the UK, from France, from the US, from Canada, from Australia, they are what you will use. Although it should be noted that anybody thinking to do business in China should register a Chinese trademark to protect their IP um, specifically for that market. Um, logistically, bonded warehouses are used. Um, so what that means is that the brand is selling directly to the end consumer and the goods are sat in a bonded warehouse in a duty-free trade zone in China. So they don't have to enter China customs on a B2B basis. So what that also means is that you are selling your product with the English language labeling and packaging. You're not having to localize your product for China in that respect. You're not having to register that product in China. The customer wants to be able to buy it as they would if they were shopping on Oxford Street in London. Um, so that is what makes it super easy. And that is the key differentiating point between Tmall Global and Tmall.com. Now, it should be noted that some brands would start on Tmall Global and then as they progress into the market and want to deepen their business in the country, they could move to registering products and setting up a second store on Tmall.com. That's totally viable and we've got examples of brands who've done that very successfully. Within Tmall Global, there are actually three different models at the moment that we have. Today, we're going to focus on the flagship store model, which is a self-managed store. It's your own flagship store that looks and feels like your website um, at home. It's really a place with an endless scroll. Um, you can just scroll through as much as you want because that's how um, the app was developed for Tmall. Um, promote your brand, telling your brand story, explaining how to use the product, um, what the ingredients are, awards you've won. The Chinese consumers really love to engage. They spend about 30 minutes a day with us on our China retail marketplaces and come to them seven or eight times a day. So uh, they're really, really engaged. Um, we've obviously got those uh, cross-border logistics solutions and bonded warehouses, but we also have some more as well, including global fulfillment centers and um, direct shipping. But really your store is a place where you can build your brand in China. You can really engage in your own marketing activities to develop a customer base there, to understand who they are, and then use our tools to uh, really niche out who your customer base is and build loyalty with them. Um, obviously, you can do marketing with us and um, externally, and the store really enables you to have a really high degree of customer trust because it's your own brand presence in the market. Next, we've got the mini store. This is a relatively new concept. Um, it's a slightly more lower cost um, opening model with no annual fees, uh, lower logistics costs and some commission discounts. And we as Team or Global will help to incubate the brand for the first three months. We will also take care of the sales and the branding and the customer service for you. So Team or Global provide all of that for you. So it's a, quite a nice model to test the market if you're not quite ready to go and open up your own flagship store. And then the third model that we have is our overseas fulfillment model, which is a consignment model. Um, some brands do it. It's also very well suited to uh, distributors and retailers who've got product that they can sell into the China market at the best price. Um, it works technically with an API login, um, drop ship within the UK, and then we take care of logistics to China. So three different models, and anybody thinking of coming to China can come and talk to us and we'll work with you to assess which is the best model. But for the rest of today, we're going to focus on how to open a team or global flagship store, because this is really the ultimate goal for all international brands to open up their own store in China on our retail marketplace. So the first thing that you would need to do when you come and talk to us is to find a partner. And we can help you find a partner. Um, there are two different models. One is a trade partner model. One is a distributor model. And what that partner will do for you is essentially be your e-commerce team on the ground in China. So they'll do everything from sales forecasting to store design, localizing your store so it meets the China um, taste and demands. Um, they will support you with product selection, 
Um, and they'll do the day-to-day -day ops of the store. They will run the marketing activities with our category managers and um, work on the logistics for you. And very importantly, analyze your data and also provide customer service. Um, it's not customer service like, where's my order? How soon will it be delivered? It's really customer service to explain what the products are. So um, as a consumer shopping on Tmall, you might have specific questions about the product um, and that partner will do the customer service angle for you. Having the partner means that you as the brand can really focus on um, strategizing your positioning in the market, looking at what marketing strategies you want to employ in the market, um, bringing your knowledge on product assortment and pricing and how that's worked for you in different markets, and most importantly, protecting your IP. We as Alibaba will then support you with all of the technical parts. So obviously we provide the marketplace platform um, through Alipay. We provide the um, payment infrastructure um, and we also have Alimama, which will supply you with the data to understand your store performance and understand who your customer is and then enable you to closer connect to them. And then, of course, logistically, we have Sanyal Logistics which will support you get your stock from wherever you are in the world to that end consumer in China. One thing that I think is so important is that any brand coming to China must build a successful strategy for China. You cannot take the strategy you have in your home country and apply it to China. You cannot take the strategy that you developed for the US or Europe and apply it to China. You must develop a strategy that's specific for this market. It is different. And you need to think about all of the different touch points and think quite differently about how they could be impacted in China. So from pricing to customer engagement, your brand image, the customer experience, what your product range is, how you describe your product, your social content all needs to be tailored for the market. And I really do think that you should spend time on this part, working with your partner, talking to us to develop this um, before you go to market. So let's have a little look at a case study and what better case study to use than Liverpool Football Club Health Supplements by Vector Consumer. Um, so this is what a team store looks like. Um, on the left hand side, you can see the home page of Vector's Liverpool Football Club Supplements store. Um, when you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a link to the hero skew. And you'll notice here that all of the artwork is adapted for the China market. So um, one thing that I observe is it's, it's a lot busier than any kind of artwork and econ pages that we see here in the West. But this is a really different market. So you need to adapt and change and make your brand work for the Chinese consumer. Um, of course, you can always see the full product range, which you see here on the right hand side. And the pricing is very clear, but there's also a lot of text to explain what the product is and what the offer is, um, which will help the consumer to make a decision on whether to purchase. Specifically on the product page, you'll notice the little arrow button on the left hand side of this, this product here. It's a short video. Like I said at the top, having a short video means that the consumer can go in and find out a little bit more and you as a brand have a chance to capture their attention and explain what your product is all about. And then you scroll down and of course you've got that endless scroll to tell the brand and the product story. So this is showing you how to make up um, a protein shake. And then, like I said, the customer reviews are a really important part of the purchasing decision for a, cons a consumer in China. They have a massive impact on conversion rates and um, they're all very visible to the potential future consumers who are looking to purchase. Once you're live, um, working with your partner, working with us, it's really important to think about the different moments that you want to be part of in China. And of course, the reason that this um, live stream is going ahead at the moment is in the build up to 1111. Um, it's the biggest campaign of the year. And of course, everybody wants to be part of it. But it's also key to remember that there are many different moments throughout the Chinese calendar for your brand to be part of and ones that will be tailored specifically to your product. Um, so that will range from Mother's Day, Queen's Day to wine festival to and various different things that will be quite specific and quite tailored to different products and moments. So it's good to think about all of these different angles. 
And then, of course, we've got live streaming. Um, live streaming is what is really bringing brands to life in China and has been really transformative through the pandemic in enabling brands to continue speaking to consumers where offline was just completely off, off the cards. Um, in 2021, live stream shopping market is expected to reach 2 trillion RMB, which is 300 billion US dollars. Um, and in fact, we saw last week, uh, Li Jiaqi, who's the lipstick guy, he sold a record 2 billion US dollars of goods on the first day of 1111 shopping festival. So what is it? Live streaming is fully immersive. It's interactive. It is the brands working with a key opinion leader to communicate all about their brand. So you've got three really cool examples from the UK here, My Protein, Holland and Barrett, Vitabiotics, where you've got sometimes the brands themselves featuring on, um, brands doing store tours. You've got a key opinion leader looking at how to make a shake and the consumer can interact. They can ask questions to the live streamers. Um, they can make recommendations to the live streamers and the brands. So it's a really different way of selling, but it's quite informal um, and it's a very exciting and authentic way of selling in China. So just before we get to Matt, I want to leave what I believe are the success factors from the many brands that I've worked with. Um, firstly, I think it's really vital to spend time finding the right partner for China. Um, it's really like hiring somebody to be part of your team. So you do need to make sure that they understand your brand and that they want to work collaborative, collaboratively with you and they've got the experience to help you succeed. Working at China Speed is like no other speed in the world. Um, things are very fast, you need to be versatile. And with that really comes a willingness to test and learn. Um, you don't have to have things perfect with e-com. You can try, you can look at the data, and then you can change things and adapt. Um, so leveraging the data that you have on the back end of your store is really crucial to um, being quite agile in China and adapting to the consumer demands. And then finally, be humble. Um, like I said right at the top, 80% of the brands we work with are making their China debut in the market. So you can be the biggest brand in the in your home country, but when you go to China, everyone starts from the same level playing field. So being humble is a really crucial factor in succeeding. So without further ado, I'm now going to welcome in Matt Banks Crompton, the MD of Vector Consumer, um, who I have now known for a couple of years. And we've been working with to um, launch a couple of stores of late. So welcome, Matt. Hi, Zarina. Good morning. Welcome. Nice Good morning. To be here. Great. So let's just start, Matt. If you can introduce yourself, please, and Vector and the two brands that you currently have live in China. Yeah, sure. So uh, Matt Banks Crompton, as you said, and I'm the MD of Vector Consumer. Uh, we've we've been around uh, for just over just over two years, uh, but we actually have a. a a, a larger company that owns us, which is a pharmaceutical contract manufacturer called PharmaPak, and that's around 25 years old. Um, so we created the company because we wanted to uh, create our own consumer healthcare brands and, and get to market. Uh, our first our first project was actually over in Hong Kong. So one of the factors to our business, we wanted to make sure that we were we were global from day one. And our first product launch was out in Hong Kong with with AS Watson. Uh, and now we, we work with those guys, but we've created two of our own brands. Uh, one of them is a inner outer beauty brand called Solve. And then the second one, as you've already mentioned, is the Liverpool Football Club uh, sports nutrition and, and wellness range. Uh, both of those brands have launched uh, in the last month or so. Uh, but it's as, as we've known each other for, the, for two years, that's how long we've been working in the background and getting everything sorted. Brilliant. Um, so how did you decide that working with Alibaba and going to China was a key strategy for you at Vector Consumer? Uh, so we've always said that we wanted to be global from day one. It's one of our key core beliefs. Uh, one of the reasons was, you know, in the UK, it's, it's, it's only so big. Uh, the, the market size is, uh, you know, is, is okay, but it's, it's, it's nothing compared to the, the global market. Uh, and there were some key key regions that we identified that we really felt we could we could win in. Um, one of the reasons was uh, 
Britishness, you know, taking taking brands to to Asia and also the Middle East hold a lot of weight when when uh, when they they're from they're from the UK and and we we, we absolutely noticed that and wanted to really drive that home. Um, so that was one of the core reasons why we we wanted to be global. Um, and then when it came to China, uh, we we were very aware of cross border opportunities. Uh, and started doing more and more research, uh, and we felt that Timor, uh, Timor Global was 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 a great partner for us, um, and it also aligned with the brands that we were bringing to market as well, very very well. Mm. And I remember when we first met, you spoke to us about the research you'd done into the customer as well, and that yes. opportunity for the fans that were already in China. Yeah, yeah. So the the idea around the uh, the Liverpool FC range uh, actually came came in in uh, Hong Kong uh, so like all good stories start uh, it started in a bar uh, we, we were over there with uh, meeting A.S. Watson in, in Hong Kong and uh, I had a I had a rep with me who was from the UK also and we were we were watching a Premier League game and we could have been in Liverpool it was that busy in the bar everyone was was watching the TV and everyone was concentrating on the game it felt like being being at home uh, and I turned to my my colleague, who was a Man United fan, uh, and said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we, we could create a range under the LFC banner uh, for sports nutrition and, and, and wellness? And at the time, it was because we had a great relationship with A.S. Watson mm -hmm. and it would be a bricks and mortar opportunity. And obviously with COVID and everything, that, that, has, that has shifted. Uh, but he... He kind of dismissed it straight away and said, well, I don't know how you'd even do it. So uh, good luck and I, I bet you can't do it. So I, I, uh, I bet him a pint mm -hmm. that we, we could do something and set set on our way, uh, got in touch with Liverpool and and, before, and and told them that, you know, I had a bit of an itch that I needed to scratch. I'd love to come in and see them talk about this opportunity. And at the same time, I went back and we had a we had a small team at the time. We, we just started Vector as myself and, and, and one other person who was a new product development and researcher. Uh, and I remember going back, coming back to the UK and saying, I think there's an opportunity, but I'm also not sure. Kind of go away and look into it and convince me that I'm either crazy, it's not a good idea, or you might have something something to look into. So she went away and, and then came back and said, you know, there's a few key golden nuggets here. So the the the, the follower, the fan base of, of Liverpool FC is stands at around 700 million globally. And of that amount, 300 plus are in are in Asia. So that was a big, big tick in the, in the box because we knew we had a captive audience straight away. Um, sports nutrition in Asia is is growing faster than any other region. And the average age range of a sports nutrition customer in, in Asia is 25 years old. Mm -hmm. um, the Premier League and Liverpool is growing again rapidly in Asia. Uh, and also the average age range of a Liverpool fan is in, in Asia is 25 years old, which mm -hmm. in the UK, it's not that. It's a generational thing in the UK. Uh, it's it's still new in out, out in Asia, so we we kind of we, we we had enough reasons to believe that this might be a good idea, um, and then we obviously started the process with Liverpool. They also agreed and said, do you know what? This is this is fab. This is great. You've got our full support, uh, and we we here we are now. But you know, it's been two years, and it's it's taken a lot of hard work uh, mm. by by a team that are that are absolutely superb both my team and also your team and, and the different people that we that we plug into. Uh, but yeah, we're finally here and we, we you know, we, we have a we have a store and, uh, and we've started selling product. I love your story so much. I think it's brilliant. Uh, it's, it's just a perfect example of taking a creative idea, yeah. going and using the data, taking a risk and then getting into market and working out what's what's going to happen and yeah, yeah. selling a whole new product i think it's really brilliant yeah, um, so i would like to talk about the partner search process because i've just spoken about how important partnership is what was that partner search process like for you and how long did it take for you to open the stores and of course you've got two stores so yeah. what did you learn from process one that you could then apply when you went through process two yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, so we we have two brands and we have two trade partners. Uh, so it's it's crucial when looking for the trade partner to to obviously 
goes without saying find the right one but um the, the first bit of uh help comes from from the the team you, you guys you know the, the team old team uh who recommended different trade partners for us to speak to uh we then we then spoke to for the liverpool range we spoke to a few different ones uh found one that already had some some strong background in in food and nutrition so that that felt like a that felt like a really good uh, base base point uh, they were also able to to demonstrate um, the, the the kind of the numbers, the spend that we'd need to commit, the 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 sales rates that we should we should be achieving. Uh, so we we kind of set on our way and and started working with that trade partner. Uh, the the first iteration, so our first brand launch, uh, working with Liverpool, a fantastic company and a club and an organisation, but you know due to their sheer size and the enormity of it it's it's not a quick process and and at times i think our trade partner must have been scratching the head thinking well, when are you guys going to be ready to launch because surely this is just taking too long but it was it was us going through our process our legals and, and all those different things once we were actually ready and we were signed and ready to go uh that the pace was 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 great i know i know i've listened to quite a few of your uh podcasts and, and live shows and things mm -hmm. arena and and you know you talk about china speed and be ready for it um i actually think you're right there is a there is a china speed but I, but i also think that there are businesses in the uk that work on that speed anyway and and it's and it's great when you are a business that like to work at that pace mm -hmm. when you find someone who also wants to work at the same pace as well um so that was that was the first the first session finding the first trade partner um second time round we had a brand that was already uh in development product uh going being manufactured first round of products was available and we we also looked for trade partners so we didn't go to the same one uh we didn't feel that they had the the expertise in the in the in more of the beauty and nutritional industry um so solve is a in a, an outer beauty range um so we wanted to find someone that had some skincare background and also someone that had some food supplement background so we looked at a few different ones um and spoke to spoke to all of them, looked through all their proposals. Uh, they were all outstanding. Um, <laughs> then went another layer uh, further by looking at the brands that they already work with, the relevant size of those brands, and and and, and then kind of laid it all out. And yeah, picked picked one, and I think we've picked an absolute superstar. Uh, we're really happy with them, um, and I'm pretty sure that from our from our kind of signing the contract to actually getting live, they, I think they set a record. I think they've they, or, or, they, they've told me that anyway. Uh, but I, but I believe. Oh dear, you've asked me that question. Right, I don't know, but it was it was maybe eight weeks. Yeah, I'm going to say I think it was about four months ago that we first started talking about Solve, and then yeah, yeah about eight weeks to get started. Yeah. Yeah, and the the level of the level of detail in the proposals uh, was was just superb. You know, I think we've all seen proposals over the years where you know someone just changes the the front title to the <laughs> to personalise it to the audience, <laughs> and then slides two to fifty are, are just the same. This was this was personalised. They they knew they wanted to work with us, and they they looked and they researched into the market and told us how they would operate if they became the trade partner. Um, so it felt like a really natural decision to, to work with them. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how, we, that's how we got to where we are today. Brilliant. Um, I want to take a short note on logistics. I think for you, the logistics process has actually been quite smooth, but that's not always the case given the, the global climate at the moment with logistics. Can you just talk to us about how you navigated that for China? Yeah, so so we manufacture products uh, across Europe. So we have UK manufacturing, we have manufacturers in Germany, in Spain, in Italy, and in Hungary. Um, and we consolidated stock and sent it sent it out into a bonded warehouse. Uh, we, we were recommended to work with um, a, a logistics partner um, from a, you know, once the goods arrive in, in, in China. And it's been a good process yeah uh, the, the, you can't you can't get away from the documentation required and, and and the level of documentation but um i think if you go into this knowing that it's not going to be easy but it's going to be worthwhile mm. and you're going to have to put some hard work in but it's going to be worthwhile 
it's yeah. okay. It's it's when you kind of expect it to be like just sending a product, a, a pallet out over to Ireland. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not it's not going to be like that. Uh, but you know, touch wood, we've 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 been we've been very happy with our with our logistics side of things. Brilliant. Um, so, like I mentioned in the presentation, more than eighty percent of those brands who launch in Timor Global are making their China debut. Yeah. So, you as uh, new to China brands, quite recently, how have you initially started using the data from your stores, and which marketing channels are you investing in to build awareness in the market? And finally, does that differ between health and beauty categories? Yeah. So, in terms of in terms of the data. Um, I, my, my background is consumer healthcare, so kind of man and boy working with the retailers in the UK and, and internationally. And usually they are inherently poor at sharing data. Uh, it, it feels like it's it's always held held in inwards. Um, we we never found that the the issue with working with with Tmall and Alibaba. In fact, I remember our first. I think our first meeting down in London, uh, you you pulled up the the site and and started taking mm -hmm. me through um, the the sports nutrition sector, and straight away we can, you know, we can see how many how many people have purchased this in the last month and all these different pieces of information, and that's really I think it's superb, um, and it's it's just a, it's a great model to, to almost have this kind of open open learn and share. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it helps brands. It helps brands look at is this a market we really want to get into is there a demand for it um so so the data the use of data is, has been really key uh, we are quite we are weeks into our process and, mm. and our sales process uh, so we're still becoming onboarded with our data so one of our trade partners for example has an app that we can that we can look through our, our data uh, but that app is not yet in the uk app store so there's you know i think data will is important today but it will become more and more important as, as we kind of become more of a mature partner and, and get used to the process. Uh, so, so yeah, that's, you know, data is crucial for us. Uh, in terms of, in terms of platforms and, and what we use, we have, uh, we have two very different marketing plans, as you'd expect. One, one is more about uh, trying to go after this LFC fan base. Mm -hmm. And then one is going after uh, the, the customer that is looking for inner or outer beauty solutions. Uh, preventative, preventative ideas and things like that. So um, they they are very different, but they they all they all centre around uh, the use of uh, KOLs uh, to to drive to drive to drive content. Um, uh, Little Red Book has just started with Solve, for example, and already we're seeing lots of content coming through, which is which is amazing to see. Um, and then also live stream and. We've we've started. We've done our first live streams now with with Liverpool. Yeah, uh, I had a had a message from your sales director on Sunday afternoon. Very excited that you've just done yeah. a big LFC live stream. Yeah, I I was uh, I was out on Sunday and uh, I got I got the video come through and I yeah. was sharing. I was showing I was showing people. Said, look at this. This is amazing. <laughs> and they were like, right, okay, I'll take your word for it. But, uh, the, but it is, the, the, it's a really exciting moment, isn't it? Well, doing a first live stream in China, seeing yeah, your brand there. Seeing your baby, you know, it's yeah. uh, it is, it's exciting. And, uh, and it, the, the way in which it's done in Asia, I think, you know, if you were to say, um, you bring someone off in, in off the high street in the UK and say, what what's your experience of live streaming? Or, you know, you break it down, selling product on TV or whatever, they'll, they'll go to the traditional format of, you know, QVC and home shopping channels. And, and it could not be further from the live stream that's going on. And I know there's a few brands now starting to do this in a, in a bigger way in the UK. There's a few companies that are really getting to grips with live streaming. And I also know that there's in Australasia, so there's some guys in New Zealand that we know that have, that have got their own uh, health and beauty website and they've started doing live streams and it's really working for them. And I, and I can see that this will become a real ripple effect and live stream in the next four to five years will become a, a key thing, it, you know, when we're picking up our phones in the UK. Uh, I remember being out in Hong Kong two, two or three years ago and we were in a Manning store. Mm -hmm. And we were just doing a store visit and all of a sudden uh, there's a lady at fixture and she's she picked up a product. There's one, there's one mobile phone 
filming her and she's kind of talking away and then within about five minutes there's 30 people with the phones recording this person apparently this person was, was quite well known mm. and, and she was doing a you know at fixture live stream sale and uh, yeah it was it was it was great to see so yeah that that's an essential part of our strategy moving forward uh, not mm. just with lfc but with solve is to do is to do live stream events um and and i think also the the inspiration to to get onto the, the store comes from from some of the stats that we see with with live streaming and and the sheer sheer opportunity if you get it right and you know we've been really inspired by uh companies such as sidem with smooth skin and and the great work that they have done internationally and, and most importantly in asia um mm. and, and you, you know you've got to mention vitabiotics as well and and, and the great job that that, that company have done and you know vitabiotics have been known for exporting for years and years and years i think they export to something like 126 markets but the 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 way in which they're doing it in, in china is is superb yeah i've got some really great brands at the moment we're very lucky um yes. the next question you are free to be as honest as you like but i'd love to for you to be able to tell the audience how you found the process of working with alibaba so, so can I tell a story? Can I tell the story about the, the the Christmas call and things? Is this? You can tell the story. Yes. I can tell the story. <laughs> right. Okay. Good. Um, so, as you know, Zarina, um, I came down with this idea, and it was already kind of it had already started. And it was being grown. This LFC idea, and it was it was before this is Christmas. Two years ago, right? This two is two years. years twenty nineteen. Yeah. No, yeah. end of November twenty nineteen. I think it was. Yeah. Or maybe mid December. It was Christmas. And it, was, it was December. Christmas. Yeah. So yeah. You were going out on your Christmas do, and everyone was getting very excited in the office. Yeah. Uh, so I, I came down and, and did my my little pitch, um, and it went well. It was a good meeting, and and you know all all of that was 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 great. And I went away, and you know I thought, oh, yeah, we'll we'll see if this this kind of happens. Uh, and then I got uh, Jennifer. Uh, I got a a message from her uh, on the twenty. Jennifer, 20th. just for, for the audience, Jennifer yeah. is my manager. She leads um, health and wellness and food and beverage across Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, she and I were in the meeting together with Matt. Yeah. So I so I picked up a voice message on the twenty seventh of December, which is usually when people are kind of those three days where not much happens. Mm -hmm. And it was it was hi Matt, I'm back in I'm back in Holland now. I've taken this I I've taken the idea back to my bosses, and they have told me how important this is. So it really kind of changed the dialogue and changed the speed uh, and, and level of interest. But you know, it it really um, to have it, to have someone like you guys in our corner, and and to know that you know you're backing the idea not just with with LFC but with with Solve and then the other the other brands that we've got in the pipeline that you know about. To know that we have a partner. Uh, that kind of looks after this this region for us uh, is 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 great. We feel really confident and really happy. Uh, and I think what we're going to see now is is this um, this movement across across Asia. So our next our next launch will be into Lazada, uh, and uh, we know we have a Liverpool fan in our in our corner with that because uh, he actually showed Balash his tattoo during the call, uh, the country manager. So. Uh, um, so yeah, it's it's been it's been great, and and we've really enjoyed the process. Brilliant. Um, so finally, I'd just like to end on how are you first feeling about your first double eleven, and yeah. what advice can you give to the audience today who might be thinking now after your inspiration, your inspiring chat, um, thinking about being part of double eleven next year for the first time? What what tips can you give to them? Yeah, I think it's. Um, it feels like Christmas, doesn't it? Double eleven. It, it all builds up to it. It's a big crescendo moment. Yeah. Um, but also, as you mentioned as well, you kind of soften the blow sometimes and say there are lots of shopping festivals. It's not just about eleven eleven, and that's very true because you know our program of events isn't all centered around this big, big one event, this big week. It's it's these it's these events right every other week. There's something going on. So um, you know to say. It's, we've we've got a plan for the full year, not just not just November, um, but we are very excited about 1111. Uh, we, we've, we've finally got our ticket to the event, and uh, we're really really excited to see the activity that's going to go on, um, and and then hopefully the sales that will will come from it. Um, and then I think my advice would be, um, I'm always astounded by the stats around 
is it um, 80 percent of businesses don't export and of the ones that do only 10 percent of them export into into china in the uk um, and that that as a stat to me doesn't make sense uh, the the opportunity the 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 just the volume the numbers uh, the way in which british products are received as well the you know British heritage products as well uh, is is absolutely second to none. Um, the the notion that you just get listed, they place an order, and then you know that's it. The the tills keep on ringing forever is is completely false. If you're not willing to put in hard work as a team and invest in it as well, uh, then then forget it. It, it. It's not it's not a quick, get rich rich quick scheme. Uh, you need to. You need to be focused on on Asia. We we as a business with our you know with our global from day one notion, we we knew and we know that our one of our biggest market focus is Asia. So our team is is focused around that as well. So every part of our team, be it sales through to logistics and supply chain, regulatory, uh, new product development, marketing, design, they all spend uh, a more than 50 percent of their time is spent working on 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 asia strategy um, so if you're not willing to to put some real hard work and and, and some cash into it uh, then it's probably not for you but if you do get it right then it's it's absolutely superb brilliant thanks so much matt i think you've raised some really great points here about partnership hard work researching the market and using the data to to test and learn and we really wish you a big, successful first 11.11 Global Shopping Festival for thank you. Lefsley and Seoul. Look forward to catching up. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank well, you. Uh, Back to you, David. Matt and Zarina, thank you very much uh, indeed. I've got one quick question for, um, for both of you, uh, I suppose, in a sense. Um, what, 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 Matt, what are your, you know, your colleagues, what are they all anticipating, thinking, that 1111 can bring what's it gonna what success for them and for you i i think the the biggest thing at the moment is whilst we do expect sales to come from it and you know we're hope, hoping that it's it's going to look pretty pretty decent and we're going to shift some some volume it's it's more of the opportunity to learn learn from the first first one and when I've spoken to people that are already doing a really good job in in, in Asia and, and obviously on on Timor, it's this kind of test and learn. It's it's this quick pivot and and don't be afraid of of giving something a go, trying it. Does it work? Doesn't work? Or it works? Keep going. Um, so I think we we're using it as a learning experience. Uh, it's it's going to stand us in good stead. And um, yeah, we, you know. We, we're not putting all our eggs in that one basket and if if 11 11 doesn't hit this number then oh my god it's no it's it's more about we're here now we've just started let's let's see how we go but let's let's be learning from it all the time uh, and, and Zarina is that is that in a sense a common thread which is you know every single aspect of of the platform in a sense is is a learning experience and you you get over time um and it being China you get over time fast uh, understanding what works for your specific brand and, and product range and consumers uh, and you have the ability to be able to to adapt around that in um, some of it in real time yes i think what matt has just said is exactly right he is weeks into selling in china with his two brands and when we look at the brands that we work with um, who've been working with us for a longer time. The planning for Double Eleven starts in May. So that marketing investment, that build up, it takes three or four months, five months even. Um, so test and learn is a really great approach for, for Vector as they go through their first one. But the notion of test and learn, it will apply forever in China because the market is evolving so quickly. You know, it's, it's such a large market and there are always new technologies. Um, we will have heard from other people on this this whole program of live stream about the exciting prospects that are coming through things like digital avatars things like augmented reality the different tools that you can employ as a brand to deliver your brand to the chinese consumer will continue to develop so testing and learning and working with those tools will be a lifelong project for brands 
Well, uh, Zarina Kanji, Tmail Global Business uh, Development and Marketing for Alibaba, and Matt Banks Crompton, the co founder and managing director of Vector Consumer. Um, that was uh, both fascinating and enlightening. Uh, thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Thanks, David. Pleasure. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back uh, in a few moments.